The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading for this Sunday is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. I would invite you to pause this video and to read this reading from your own Bible or by following the link you'll find in the description of this video. Our passage this morning revolves around the themes of anticipation and a renewed hope reflected in the lives of Simeon and Anna. As we reflect on their journey, let us ponder our own quest for renewal. Mary and Joseph bring the infant Jesus to the temple for purification, adhering to the law of Moses in our reading today. But our focus this morning is on Simeon and the prophet Anna, who are both in the temple that day. Both are righteous and especially devout people who are eagerly waiting the consolation of Israel. The elderly Simeon, inspired by the Holy Spirit's promise that he will see God's salvation arrive before he dies, eagerly awaits the Messiah. At 84, Anna, who never left the temple um, after uh, the loss of her husband, embodies a renewed hope for God's people. The Holy Spirit confirms in both Simeon and Anna's hearts that the long-awaited Messiah has arrived. Their anticipation and the expressions of hope at the arrival of the infant Jesus emphasized his significance to the world in fulfilling divine promises and bringing salvation to all the people. Imagine Simeon and Anna's anticipation and hope, akin to the way we eagerly await signs of transformation in our lives. Simeon, on the brink of the end of his, journey, his life journey, has prayed fervently for a sign that change is coming even if he won't fully experience that change. It's a sentiment many of us can relate to, especially in our uncertain times, which echoes our deep longing for a glimpse of hope amid life's uncertainties. Now imagine the 84-year-old widow Anna, who has spent the last years of her life in constant worship in the temple, finally seeing the infant Messiah. Her spirit is lifted, and she begins praising God and sharing the good news of hope with all those awaiting redemption. There's a vibrancy in her renewal, an energy that transcends age and circumstance. Our reading today reminds us that we, as God's created children, always have the promise of hope, even if we don't know exactly what it will look like because of our broken world. We can anticipate God's fulfilling God's promises. Simeon and Anna celebrate the infant Jesus' presentation in the temple as the promises of God being fulfilled. Now, it is important to note that Simeon, in his prophetic wisdom, predicts that the arrival of the Messiah will reveal the true intentions of many hearts of the people who will oppose God's path proclaimed by Jesus. Change, even when it brings improvement, is met often with resistance. In our world, we witness this resistance in politics and economics, where the powerful cling to the status quo, to our detriment for our unity, and too often at the expense of the marginalized. In our own lives, we often encounter brokenness, seeking ways to repair or renew, whether it's in our health, relationships, or the societal structures that shape our world. Too often, we find ourselves swayed by empty promises and deceptive rhetoric, perpetuating brokenness instead of healing. And yet, today's reading reminds us that as God's children, we always have the promise of hope. Simeon and Anna celebrated the infant Jesus as the fulfillment of God's promises, assuring us that God sees beyond our brokenness, desiring our, recon 
our reconciliation and restoration. As we, then, stand at the intersection of our own stories and the divine narrative, let us not be merely spectators, but active participants in the unfolding of God's promises. Just as Simeon and Anna beheld the infant Jesus and embraced the hope of redemption, so too are we invited to witness the ongoing work of God in our lives. In the tapestry of our lives, each thread is woven with purpose, and every moment holds the potential for renewal. As we depart from our time of reflection together this morning, let our hearts echo with the resounding truth that the promises of God are not distant and unreachable, but are present and palpable. May we carry the anticipation of Simeon, the devotion of Anna, and the transformative power of Christ's birth with us. Let this hope be the melody that guides our steps, the hope-filled light that illuminates our path, and the assurance that through our brokenness, God is weaving a masterpiece of restoration. So as we step into the unknown chapters of our lives, let us live with the confidence that in the whispers of hope, the echoes of renewal, we are participants in God's grand narrative. And may our lives be a testament to the enduring truth that in Christ, all things are being made new. I would now like to invite you to join with me in prayer as we pray for the church, our world, our community, those in need, and those who have departed. In joy and humility, let us pray to the creator of the universe. By the good news of our salvation brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the mystery of the word made flesh, Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the birth and time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and magi, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By su the submission of the Maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the baptism of the Son of God in the river Jordan, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. We pray for the world, for peace in the world, for the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. In our parish this week, we pray for Edgar and Janice, Carol, Pat, Ethan, Dave, Joe, Jack and Tina, Mark, Kathy, Joyce, John, Megan and Adam, Diane and Don, for Tracy, Shirley, Jim, Elizabeth, Jocelyn, Kathy, Odile, Kylie, Eric, Denise, Edith, Doreen, Enid, Karen, Brian, Barb, Alex, Vicki, Eva, Miriam, Max, Annette, and Mary Rose. We also pray for all those in our parish experiencing continuing long-term health concerns, praying especially for Norma, Charlotte, Aubrey, Erlina, Claude and Carol, Marie, Vicki, Kim, Janet, Jan, Florence, Marie, Charlene, Brandy, Bud, Amy, Betty, and Ray, that all may be relieved and protected. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Grant that the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdoms of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. Almighty God, you have shed upon us the new light of your incarnate word. May this light, enkindled in our hearts, shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now to conclude our time together, I will give you God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.